see this, this right here. This is how many days before the CrossFit Games open. 48 days. I bet you didn't know it was that soon, did you? And uh, this video is sponsored by none other than the Wattproof app. The Wattproof app is the go-to app to record and keep a track of your workouts. I love to film my workouts and then look back to see where I lost time. Where could my transitions have been faster? Where did my movement break down? It's a great habit to get into, to film your workouts and look back at them. It's always a good idea to film your open workouts. One, so you can have a history of it and look back over the years. But second, just in case you have to submit a video to validate a score. So highly recommend the Wattproof app. Get it today. Start recording your workouts. What is up, you sexy beasts? I was scrolling through YouTube yesterday and I saw this video pop up with the thumbnail that says CrossFit equals unhealthy? Question mark. It's by a guy called Zach Tallender who I follow on YouTube. He runs a weightlifting channel, uh, which I really enjoy. And he had a guest on a show called Aaron Alexander from the Align Podcast. Both these guys are doing great work, so go check out their stuff. But my blood begins to boil when I see thumbnails or titles talking about CrossFit in a negative light or implying that CrossFit is causing harm because CrossFit is a big part of my world. I consider the CrossFit community my family and I feel extremely passionate and strongly about the CrossFit affiliate owners in particular. These people, you know, I know the blood, sweat and tears it takes to run a successful or just to keep the doors open to a CrossFit affiliate. You don't do it to make millions of dollars. You do it because you genuinely want to see your community healthier and fitter. You want to educate people on how to move well, how to eat well, and just foster a great community. That is the heart of every CrossFit affiliate owner that I've ever met in my life. And so uh, it gets me going, you know, when I see these videos. But I also understand YouTube. And I know that, you know, this, it's important to get people to click on your videos. So clickbait, it exists. And so I was just pushing down the anger for a minute and just decided to watch the video, see what they're talking about, and then uh, perhaps give my feedback if needed. The topic they were discussing is a condition called orthorexia. It's a recognized condition, and it's essentially the unhealthy obsession with health and fitness. And I never knew this word existed, but I've certainly seen it before. And it's basically someone who gets so obsessed with their health and fitness to the point where it actually det starts to detract from their life. And uh, essentially these guys were saying that CrossFit opens the door to or invites this condition. So I want to play a few clips from this video and just give my thoughts and my commentary and I'd absolutely love to know what you guys think as well. So please get involved down in the comments and let me know what you think. But I've, I've seen someone with orthorexia and it was like nauseating actually. Mm -hmm. They're a CrossFitter. There's a lot of it that develops out of It's CrossFit. all compensation, man. So CrossFit is one of those spaces where it is so effective in the way that it brings about intensity to training. Mm. And and that is the line which I'm going to draw its effectiveness and efficacy because I feel like there are many issues with it, just like there's many issues with uh, other methodologies, but I feel like it is incredibly effective at taking someone and teaching them how to work hard. Okay, great. So Zach here recognizes that one of the benefits of CrossFit is that it teaches people how to push harder, to do hard things and to learn how to work at a higher intensity. Absolutely, that's a benefit of CrossFit. The problem is he says that that is where he draws the line when it comes to the efficacy of CrossFit. And I can't disagree more with the statement. There are so many other benefits to CrossFit than just the intensity of the workouts. Um, you know, I think if you speak to any CrossFitter, they would say that they go to the CrossFit gym firstly because of the community and the people and second because of the fitness. CrossFit has this unique ability to bring people from all walks of life together and make them feel like family. And that social aspect is such a huge part of people's health. So not only do we teach people how to work at high intensities, we create real connection when it comes to friendships and family. We teach people how to move their bodies well without any weight, just body weight movements. That's where we start. We start with body weight movements, air squats, burpees, push-ups, pull-ups. We teach people how to move their bodies well. Then we teach them how to move external objects well. We teach people how to eat well. We teach them how to recover well. We give them a broad fitness and different modalities. We encourage them to play and try other sports. So there is 
so many other benefits to CrossFit than just the intensity of some of our workouts. Not every day is intense. We do a lot of technique work, we do, do a lot of conditioning, and yes, some of our workouts are very intense as well. But that is not, you can't draw the line for, to the efficacy of CrossFit just at intensity. Like, for instance, there's this workout called DT. Have you heard of this? Mm -mm. It's 12 deadlifts, nine power clean, nine hang power cleans, and six shoulder to overhead, like six jerks or six push presses mm -hmm. and five rounds of that. And so if you do that really fast, like really, really fast, you can do that in you know under 10 minutes and some people under five minutes. That is however many reps, however many vol like pieces of volume for the average person to do that in under 10 minutes when in all regularity at that weight, like without the pushing without the situation that person probably would have taken three four times as long that's you know more intensity working harder and that's a great thing to be exposed to the potential that you can work harder mm -hmm. what i saw was this person just continuing to just stack more of that on if i did not reach this level of difficulty this feeling of dying while i'm working out it is not effective. Okay, so Zach here is talking about a very specific person. We've probably all seen this person in the CrossFit gym and they do not represent every member of the gym. There's probably one or two in every gym and it's the person who does not know when to stop. It's the person who does not listen to the coach because doing DT at my gym, uh, everyone in the class's weight was determined by me. And if you were a beginner, you were doing DT with an empty barbell or a broomstick. So. Yes, not every CrossFit gym is created equal and perhaps not every coach has the ability or the motivation to, to really guide and coach their members. But this person that he's talking about is an outlier. It's a specific personality. Uh, it, is not, it does not represent every CrossFitter and it certainly does not reflect um, on CrossFit as a whole. So yes, I can recognize the person that he's talking about as well, but that is not CrossFit. That is a person. At one point I had an office in the... Uh, I think it's called LA CrossFit. It was like one of the first like 10 CrossFits in the world or something. Um, and that was my original, it was in Los Angeles, obviously. That was my, my original introduction, really like being in CrossFit. Because I was, you know, working with some people from there right. and I would like take some yeah. classes just to kind of have the experience. And I found it so shameful to look up at the board and see like the weights that I did or whatever. And I'd be like, like I have this story that if I'm not the strongest person or the fastest person or the the most whatever thing, then that hits on parts of me where I'm like, I don't feel good. Well, I would, I, I think, I think that is competitive. There's healthy, there's healthy aspects. Right, right. But where it becomes unhealthy is like, cool, I'm going to compensate and I'm going to, I'm going to just, just butcher this movement mm -hmm. in order to get more weight. And I'm actually going to have a mechanical breakdown in order to fulfill my, you know, my, my ego. Oh, that is, that is, that is, that is, cross, I call that, there's yeah, a big chunk of yes, CrossFit. That is, that. I call that the, the, pro the yeah. problem. No, that is not the problem. That is not CrossFit. That is the individual's problem. That is, that was Aaron's problem when he looked at the whiteboard and had insecurities and wanted to be the fastest and the strongest. That is an issue that lies with the individual, not the methodology. So the methodology or, you know, the gym that he walked into, it exposed the issues that he had as an individual. Like I said before, that person that doesn't know when to stop, that person who always has to have the top scores and will do whatever it takes and break down their technique and their form to get there, that is not CrossFit. That is an issue of the person that needs to be dealt with. So I see what they're trying to say and where they're coming from, but I think they're missing the point here. I think they're talking about a deep issue that an individual has, an insecurity and a motivation that is unhealthy, and CrossFit is exposing that. And again, like CrossFit gym owners aren't counselors or doctors, um, but perhaps they could guide a member like that in the direction of a psychologist or someone who can help them with those insecurities or those problems that are causing them to act the way that they are. And um, you know, people pay a CrossFit gym to get coached. That's what you sign up for, to, to get a coach and to be coached. And hopefully CrossFit coaches realize that and take that upon themselves that, hey, these people are paying to be coached by me, to be guided by me, and that is my job. And if a member does not want to be coached or guided, then perhaps they're not the right fit for that gym. But I do want to bring up the whiteboard. I guess these days CrossFit gyms have screens rather than whiteboards, but I do want to bring up the point of recording your score 
publicly on a whiteboard or on a screen and how you guys feel about that. I've always seen the whiteboard or the software on the TV as a tool for me to track my performance, to track my results over time. And then as a secondary benefit, perhaps I would compare it to some of the other members that are of a similar fitness to me. I would use the whiteboard as a source of inspiration. I would come into the afternoon class and I would see that Johnny in the morning managed to squeeze out eight rounds of this workout. I thought that only six or seven rounds was possible. And so I would push harder to try and get to Johnny's score within my limits and within the coach's guidance when it comes to my technique and my weights and all those things. But I've always seen the recording of my score as twofold. One, for my own personal history and to track my um, performance and how I'm improving. You know, CrossFit is all about a repeatable and trackable fitness. That's another benefit. We can actually track our performance and our, our improvement over time because we record things. And then secondary, as a source of inspiration. So I'd love to know what you guys, how you guys feel about the whiteboard or the, the software that records our scores. Should that be public to the whole gym? Is that something that's healthy? Or should it just be a notebook or an app that no one else gets to see, it's just for you? I'm really interested to know what you guys think about this topic, so let me know. One thing that I used to say to CrossFit gym owners is treat your members like adults. If you treat them like kids, they're gonna act like kids. If you treat them like adults, they'll act like adults. So just treat them like adults. If you wanna put your score up on the board and you're comfortable with that, then do that. If you feel like that has a negative effect on you, then don't do that. You know, you're an adult, make the decision for yourself. If it makes you feel yuck to put your score up publicly, then don't do it, you don't have to. I certainly don't think that we should be forcing members to record their score publicly, but I do think there is real value in recording and tracking your workouts and perhaps even putting them up somewhere public where it can inspire the next person that's doing the workout. So let me know what you think about that video and your thoughts around the whiteboard and recording scores. I would love to hear it. But other than that, stay sexy, keep roaring love. See you soon. Mwah.